Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest that happened in running this week. This week's stories include the cancellation of the Eastern States 100, a tribute to ultra legend Don Ritchie, and I wish you all a Merry Statesmas. Hello and Merry Statesmas, Outhouse Nation. Well, it's here. The week leading into the 2018 Western States 100 is upon us. Despite some key withdrawals in the past week, things are still shaking up to be a hotly competitive weekend, not to mention the now 100 plus degree temperatures forecast for Auburn on Saturday. If you want to see an in-depth and updated list of contenders, I urge you to check out irunfar.com. I'm gonna run down my top picks for the race. Let's begin with the ladies. Notably, we had another top women drop since last week's show. Camille Heron is now out, leaving us with Courtney DeWalter as the likely race frontrunner and my top pick. I wouldn't count out former winners Casey Lichtai and Stephanie Violet. One is likely to podium. A couple other ladies I think could do really well this year include Nicole Caligaropoulos, who has been training in the Phoenix Heat and Hills, as well as dominating Elsa McDonald, who slayed Black Canyon earlier this year. As for the men's side, we've got to start out by talking about Jim Walmsley, who is back for his third straight attempt. Based upon what he's shown he is capable of through 60 to 80 miles on this course, it really should be his race to lose. If he overextends himself early in the heat, it could once again be his undoing. Or maybe he'll knock it out of the park this time. That heat wasn't expected to be as much of a factor until the past day or so when they've ratcheted up the forecast. Even if Jim doesn't misstep, he's got to contend with the most dominant mountain 100 mile runner in the world right now, Frenchman Francois Den. I had a hard time deciphering some of his training as he throws in quite a few bike rides, but this ain't his first rodeo at States either. He knows what he's getting himself into. I personally am pulling for Phoenix local Zach Bitter. He's the fastest American ever at 100 miles and his new training grounds should only help his prep. Oh yeah and I'm pacing him. Should be a fun weekend. There's a slew of other incredible runners who are all capable of winning this race, but that's all we've got time for. For folks on the Beast Coast, it's a not so merry e Statesmas. As it was just announced, the upcoming Eastern States 100 was just canceled. In an email that went out to participants this week, race director David Walker stated that permit violations have forced the sudden and abrupt cancellation of the event and partial refunds will go out as soon as possible. In a follow-up to the somewhat cryptic first email, the race director explained that an unexpected resignation of their communications director was the undoing of the event. Apparently, one must have a special certification to manage the Regional Incident Management Unit, or IMU, through the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, which is what the race relies upon for RaceCom. Without it, they did not have a backup plan to support the safety of the race. While personally, we've never relied upon one of these types of systems for communications, it is apparently complex enough that they could not come up with a solution. Bummer. Nike is under fire for ripping off the Naval Academy logo in a new marketing campaign collaboration with Undefeated. Let's take a look for ourselves. Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna say that's a pretty close rip of their work, but I guess we'll see if it'll hold up. Harvey Lewis continues his march northward on the Appalachian Trail. He's now making his way through Virginia over 20 days in and is over 900 miles into his journey. Apparently, he's suffering with a bit of a hurt knee. That's expected. We'll see how he adapts to that injury as he continues. He'll have to ramp things up at some point as the final couple of states through New Hampshire and Maine have some of the toughest terrain of the entire trail. He expects to finish by July 14th. The Mako Show is back in the news this week as Chris takes the win at the Leadville Marathon, apparently limboing under the finish tape. Other notables to finish the marathon include Dave Mackey, who is on his Leadman quest, and even Lance Armstrong? Okay, mighty Midwest runners, we have those promised results from the Mohican 100. It was Travis Zipfel representing Ohio Valley Running Company with the big win in 18 hours, 31 minutes, ahead of Jacob, Jacob Conrad, who was second in 1952. On the ladies' side, Candy Ferris of Florida was the only sub-24 hour winner, winning in 23.52. Second place went to Ohio local Connie Gardner in 25.27. 
third through fifth place women were all within three minutes of Connie. In the Northeast, the famed Mount Washington Road Race took place up to the top of, well you guessed it, Mount Washington. The 7.6 mile uphill grind is a pretty big deal, and this year Italian Cesar Maestri took the win in one hour, 53 seconds. It was exactly one minute up on Eric Blake, Sage Canada was third in 103. For the ladies, Kim Dobson was first in one hour, 11 minutes, 42 seconds, followed by Heidi Caldwell in 114.55. The Broken Arrow Sky Race went down in Squaw Valley with a 52K on a double loop course around the ski area. Jimmy Elam slayed the ultra, setting a new course record in four hours, 54 minutes. New half dome record holder Nick Elson took second in 5.05. On the ladies' side, Megan Kimmel um, not only won, but took 32 minutes off the course record, winning in 5 hours 30 minutes, showing her dominance, placing fifth overall. Rhea Kolbel was second in 548, also under the previous record. We've also got to make mention of sixth place finisher Hilly Goat, Hillary Allen, who seems to be on a strong comeback from her skyrunning accident last year. We missed this result last month, but we wanted to make mention of the two finishers at the somewhat obscure Infinitus 888km race held on a loop course in Vermont. Greg Salveson won, or maybe could say survived, the longest, finishing in 9 days, 3 hours, 23 minutes. The event also saw its first ever female finisher in Helen Dumas in 9 days, 22 hours, 48 minutes. Yeah, I guess the seconds don't really matter much for those results. Congrats to those two. In other long distance racing news, the Sri Chinmoy 3100 mile kicked off this week in New York. This event is the longest annually held certified foot race in the world, where competitors click off 70 to 80 miles a day during the 18 hours the course is open. Look for full results in about 40 to 50 days from now. Yeah, they're doing that every day. We close out this week with a tribute to British ultra runner Don Ritchie, who passed away at age 73. Folks, if you haven't heard of Don Ritchie, perk your ears up. We just lost a great in the sport of ultra running. In 1978, Ritchie ran 100 kilometers in six hours, 10 minutes, 20 seconds, which still stands as the world record today. Some of Ritchie's other accomplishments? Well, we could be here all day, but here are a few. He ran 100 miles in 1977 in 11 hours, 30 minutes, 51 seconds, and again broke 12 hours in 1979 with an 1151 road 100 mile. En route to his 100K world record, he split four hours, 53 minutes at 50 miles, and later ran a 451. He's also dabbled in longer endeavors like the John O'Groats to Land's End in the UK, 844 mile route in 10 days, 15 hours, 25 minutes. And with that, thanks for tuning into episode 98 of Outhouse News, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or questions or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to directly support the show financially, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this channel. You can also pick up this custom pair of Jam Jam sunglasses right on our site. Have a shit week.